So this is just an ordinary six-sided dice. And the question I have for you is, can you memorize the location of every dot on the dice so that then you would be able to draw the dice from any angle or else look at a drawing of a dice and tell whether the dots are in the right places? So I'm going to teach you a way to do that and it boils down to three or four little tricks you can use. The first trick is the one that a lot of people know, which is that opposite sides always add up to seven. So you've got the one and the six on opposite sides, you've got the two and the five on opposite sides, and you've got the three and the four on opposite sides. And that's a good start, but it doesn't fully specify the location of every dot. So the second trick is, if you imagine that the six is a two-lane road, and if you imagine that the three is a one-lane road across the diagonal, then you can imagine driving along one lane of the six and going over the bump and onto the three. Notice how that's quite a smooth, gentle curve in the road. In other words, an obtuse angle. Whereas if the three was over here where the two is, then it would be a sharp bend, but it's not a sharp bend. It's a smooth, gentle curve in the road. So that's the second trick. Now, you might ask, is it this lane of the six that becomes a three, or is it this lane of the six that becomes a three? We'll come back to that in a moment. The answer is it doesn't matter, but we'll come back and talk about why it doesn't matter. So the third trick is to remember that there is a corner on the dice that doesn't have any dots near it. Now, if you think about it, the only place where that's possible is in between the one, the two, and the three. Because the four has a dot in every corner, so does the five, so does the six. Now, the first trick, that opposite sides add up to seven, tells you where the one is relative to the six. The second trick, that one lane of the six turns into the three, tells you where the three is relative to the six. And now this third trick, remembering that there's a corner with no dots near it, tells you where the two is relative to the three and the one. Because for that to work, the two has to make this V shape with the three, and then the one has to be on the third side. So we've now almost fully specified the location of every dot on the dice. The only thing left is the question I said I'd come back to, you know, whether it's this lane of the six that becomes a three or this one. And the answer is both. Some dice go one way and some dice go the other way. They're called left-handed and right-handed dice, and one of them is more common than the other, but the less common one is not especially rare. If you've got a reasonably large collection of dice at home, you've probably got some of each. So what that means is, if you don't care whether you're drawing a left-handed or a right-handed dice, if either will do, then all you need are the three tricks that I've already shown you. Which lane of the six becomes a three? Well, they're both correct, so just pick one at random and go with it. On the other hand, if you specifically want a left-handed or right-handed dice, then you need a fourth trick to help you remember which is which. Now, this is a left-handed dice. And as you can see, it's actually the right lane of the six that turns into the three. So that's not the way to think of it. On the other hand, it does make a left turn and going the other way from the 3 onto the 6, well, now you're on the left lane of the 6. Anyway, that's one way to remember where the dots are in a six-sided dice. Those three tricks plus a fourth for the chirality of that matters to you. And I'm sure that knowing this will enrich your life dramatically.